your name and where are you from? My name is Daryl Gardner, and I'm from Belvedere, Delaware. Wilmington, but you know, Belvedere, small town. What was your life like before you heard about Reliable Aid? A quick sum up, um, knucklehead, knucklehead adolescent. Uh, and even, I mean, even as an adult, I was just still a, a knucklehead adolescent. I didn't really have a too much of a relationship with my family or my loved ones because of the illness, you know, my grandfather caught it, it kind of, you know, drove a wedge in us, you know, me, my grandparents or whatever, but, um, yeah, I was just running the streets, doing whatever, trying to make ends meet, hustling here and there, taking, doing whatever, stuff that I wasn't supposed to be doing, basically, you know, all day. Okay, I want you to tell me about your backstory. What is your backstory that gives us a vested interest in your journey? So what I'm looking for is for you to tell me the results that you wanted up front. Like, you know, tell me what it is you told me that one day. And um, then we're gonna start the story from there. Well, just to cut straight through to the end, uh, I guess my end game or what I hope to see or, you know, foresee out of this union, uh, something to bring me closer to my grandparents. Had a brief conversation, but um, I, I didn't always have the I haven't always had the best relationship, you know, with my parents through the you know big age difference. My grandparents raised me since birth, but uh, big age difference gap, so it was always a lot of push and pull, give and take, and we never really saw eye to eye. But getting older, you know, it, it, it changes things, change of that nature. So in the end, it kind of just brought me closer to my parents. You know, my grandfather got sick. Yeah, hold up, the little dude fixing the light. He can't read. Yeah, I can't tell you. <laughs> I wanted to turn the camera around so y'all. Right. All right, back to the show. All right, that's what we're doing. focus, man. Um, you, you did a good job with that. Don't even worry about it because you, you went right into the next question. My next question is, what did you want to accomplish? You already told me that. Now, you said you wanted to accomplish spending more time with your grandparents. I, and you know what? Actually, I wanted to accomplish spending uh, a significantly a lot more time with my grandparents because before my time was just you know taken up by women in the streets just running around doing unimportant things that you know don't really matter in the bigger picture of things in the grand scheme so um it really uh several ways not only just spending more time with my grandfather and my grandparents but you know actually caring about what's going on with them and you know being aware of small things like doctor's appointments and my grandfather's medications and things like that like people take things like that for granted and they don't, you know, they don't really care. But you love your, you love your parents or whoever you care for. You love them, but we don't always have time in the day or, you know, to, you know, break down and see about what's going on with them or, you know, actually sit down and ask them how do you feel today or what's going on with you or is your medications running out? So it really kind of intricated my life into my parents' life a lot more, and I, I really appreciate that. What was the external struggle that you was dealing with? Like, what was the physical struggle that wouldn't allow you to spend more time with them? Plain and clear, I would have to say the biggest struggle that kept me away from them is financial struggle. So, uh, pretty much cut and clear, I didn't have money, so I had to go out and get money how I knew how. That drove a wedge between me and my parents because they didn't want me to do that. Of course, they cared for me, so they didn't want me to take that path. Also, it just, it, when you're not financially stable or set, it, it does things to you, you know, psychologically or mentally. So that can also, you know, and that's what was driving the wedge between me and my parents. I was always mad because I didn't have money for things or to help out. So I, I used to just blow up and we would have our differences because of my internal struggles and things like that. So what was the internal struggles that you was dealing with like on the mental like what was the real reason that kept you from being with them the real reason like what in your mind wouldn't allow you to like you know we knew your finances was jacked up we know you was a knucklehead we know you had a lot going on but what was the thing in the back of your mind that just was like oh, i i can't go around there like this i refuse to be a burden on anybody in my life, like not just parents or family, friends, I don't care if you're a stranger in the street. My grandfather 
You know, I, I'm real thankful. That's why I'm glad I got the chance to take care of man. But he always taught me, and he instilled in me a work ethic. Not pride, nothing like that, but you know, you're supposed to stick to yourself, take care of your business work, and take care of your family. And he, and he, he put that in me deep, deep, deep. So the fact that I couldn't contribute or I wasn't holding up my part of the bargain, you know, as his son or as a man, <clears throat> kind of kept me. That was an internal struggle. Physically, it was just on the outside, it was just not having money. I got to go hustle, so I can't be here. But internally, it was like, I let my grandfather down because he raised me this way and he instilled this in me and I just let it go by the wayside. And so that was kind of messing me up a lot because I just thought I was kind of like a failure to them. And I'm not going to come around and I didn't want to come around and have to help my grandfather and then also depend on them. And it's like you paying me to take care of you because I didn't feel like that was right. What was the wall or the problem that you hit that made you finally say like, look, this is enough. I got to get I got to get around there. I got to get this relationship going. <clears throat> Well, we had actually been through a couple of different other companies or different, you know, a couple of different other places and they just simply didn't pan out. Like a couple of the nurses or the home health care aides just wasn't, they didn't really care about my grandfather. They would just sit, come around and just do whatever, but they didn't, they didn't have his best interest or his wife's best interest at heart. So once the last nurse stepped out, I'm like, it don't make no problem. Like, I need to be here. Like, I need to be here with my grandfather. So that was the, realizing that, you know, Ain't nothing more important than family, and family should be the one to take care of family instead of letting the outsider come in and take care of your family first. I mean, if that has to be an option, so be it. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. But I feel like the first option should always be family, kin, blood, or whatever's closest to you in your heart. And my grandfather is my heart, so I can't see nobody else taking care of him more properly than I can. With the epiphany of you got to take care of this, if it's going to be somebody taking care of your grandfather, it's going to be you. It sound like what you're saying. And you figured out that the new vehicle was you. What was the plan? What would um where where this reliable aid thing a hey, come in at? Like you know. Well, actually, uh, the reliable aid, uh, my mother, actually, she's the one who uh, worried about me to that. Um, like I said, a couple of the nurses before, they just wasn't panning out, and she was like, you know, she just wanted me to come around and start helping out pop more. So I asked her, I'm like, well, where's his nurses or his own health care And she was like, they not, basically they weren't doing a good job. So I'm, that's what kind of put me on the path. Like, all right, let me start stepping up with my grandfather. So then she was like, well, reliable aid, you know, help, home health care is blah, blah. So she handed me the information and just off and running from there. And after that, it kind of made it easier because before I was just, kind of helping out my grandfather around the house, but then when I got with Reliable and really became his healthcare aide, it kind of solidified it more. And he instilled such a good work ethic in me that once I officially got the job as his own healthcare aide, then that work ethic that he put instilled in me kicked in. So now it's like, okay, I'm really his nurse now. Like I got to be his man nurse for real now. So yeah, that was a, that was a good union, good business venture right there. Yo, you answered the next three questions. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, what was your end result? You told me that. <laughs> what was the transformation, the internal desires you achieved? You told me that. I was gonna say, what was the conflicts? You told me that with the people, and she told me everything. <laughs> I'm gonna ask you anyway, but it's cool. <laughs> what, what conflicts did you experience along the way that made it a struggle? Like you know, even getting to meet a company like Reliable. Uh, first off, is mindset. Uh, I don't think a lot of people kind of take for granted or take lightly the true title of a, a home healthcare aid and what it takes, not only physically but the psychological and mental capabilities. So, it was a couple blocks. Like I'm like I'm not qualified to do this. So look at my grandfather. You know, he medicines and needles and all kind of stuff. Like I'm not qualified to do this. So it was nervousness, um, kind of a lot of push mostly for myself just internal war with myself um doubt from other people like you sure you can take care of pop and da -da 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 this and your minds elsewhere and this is your internal struggle right here by the way this is your internal struggle okay well pretty much my internal struggle was just thinking that i wasn't qualified to take care of so that was my big yeah that was the biggest internal yeah, struggle. yeah somebody better than you almost right feeling like i was I really I, needed you right he, he, he did and i didn't know that but i figured you know he needs a professional or doctor's offices and things of that nature thinking it's more if law is it's bigger than you know brown that's what i was figuring but you know come to find out 
family, love, and closeness, unity. What was your what, what did you achieve? You know, once they once they got reliably got you on a team with your grandfather. What, what did you achieve? I'm gonna just give you half the list because the whole list kind of. But um, I mean, financial stability for one. I was a person. Maybe not the most important thing, but I was up there. Financial stability, uh, better relationship with my parents, uh, more accountability. Being there for my grandfather's appointments and being on time and coming there when he, you know, when I tell him to come. So accountability, uh, family, responsibility, punctuality. I can go on for days. Man. Like, <laughs> Networking also. I have a lot of other people that know that I'm a home health care for my grandfather. I work for a lot, but they be like, well, how do you get into that? How do you do that? It was cool. What was the uh, transformation that you experienced on the inside that allowed you to get to the point that you're at right now? Um, I would say Ask me that again. What, what, you, you told me about the external struggles and uh, the internal struggles. You know the mental things that was going on. You maybe didn't think you was good enough. You uh, you had other people thinking, having you thinking like, oh, Pop needs a real nurse, and you're not qualified. And you know, what what shook that uh, that that stinking thinking off? What what made you say, um, I'm the one, and, and anything I can do, I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Like what what got into you? <laughs> Just, it just felt like home again. Uh, like I said, for a long time, like I've been troublesome. I had troublesome parents. That's the best way I could have troublesome parents. So, you know, you can't have the best or closest relationships with your loved ones when you, you know, when you, when you want the wrong path or you're doing some other. So, once I started being more reliable and started taking care of my grandfather, it just, brought the family back together again. You know, I was raising all my grandparents and it was only us three, it was always only us. My aunt that was for a little bit when we were younger, but for the most part, I was pretty much only child. My grandparents raised me by itself. So when I got more reliable and came back, it just, you know, just, I felt like a kid again. It brought the family back together and that put a lot more things back in perspective as far as, you know, what they taught me, how they raised me. So it's like, what was together once fell apart, came back together and then just blossom. So in a way, you really got the same story I got. Like the interview's over, but that's that's an awesome story. But you got the same story I got. I was the adult child of the two senior parents. It's just your two senior parents was your grandparents because they raised you all along. So yeah, after they raised you, probably left the nest, but seeing they needed you and came on back. You feel me? Same thing happened with me. Like my oh, they need like 16, 17 when I was born. So I, I don't fault them. Right. I don't fault my father, but right. I just, it's just like, man, I get so mad at my parents now, mom and pop, they do the retarded shit. Man, I be telling people all the time, like, yo, when your parents get older, that shit really reverses. Like, you really gotta teach and take care of your parents, man. I be, I be snapping on mom, but it's crazy. Like, when I when I hit, like, high, after high school, it was rap. Like, I went crazy. I did seven years in prison, everything. Like, so, during that whole time, like, it was just nothing. But then when I started doing this and started taking care of pop, it was like, I was like seven again. It was always just us in the house, eating, laughing, cracking jokes. Like, like man, it's like 20 years ago. Like, what happened to all this? Shit? <laughs> so, <laughs> now I don't want to let that go again. Because so now I feel like it's my turn. Right, 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 right. Parents are your best assets, man. <laughs> Especially if you got some word. I wish my grandparents was here. Absolutely. My mom be busting, man. I worked up. She be. She probably my arch nemesis for real, man. She just be popping me so much every day, like. But I love her. I gotta take care of her. Just, just one way she got me, man. Absolutely, man. I appreciate your time, man. Thank you for coming up. Anytime, man. You gotta call me, man. Hang <laughs> out. Okay. Talk, chill, whatever, man. All right.